Hey, David. Hello. Teddy, nice to meet you. How are you, Teddy? Thanks for doing this. I'm good. How are Thanks you? Thanks for having me. Who are you? I'm a time traveler. Or I was. I'm stuck. In 1969. We're stuck. All of space and time he promised me. Now I've got a job in a shop. I've got to support him. Arthur. Sorry. What do you miss most now, four years on, though, about being the doctor? I, I, once a doctor, always a doctor, a bit. You, you can't really... It would be churlish to try and shake it off because people love it so much and it's always there. It's a bit like being president of the United States, I like to think. You know, that you, you still get called Mr. President after you've left. And I still, a couple of times a day, somebody calls, addresses me as doctor, which is fine by me. That's all right. It's okay, right? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> do you have any, how, how ludicrous do I sound talking about myself like that? Yeah, it's like being the president of the United States. Yeah. Leader of the free world. I'm essentially the leader of the free world, yeah. You're just making this up as you go along. Yep. But I do it brilliantly. When you're in Doctor Who, it's, it's completely all-consuming. And it changed my life in all sorts of ways and uh, opened up all sorts of opportunities from having been in it. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm still talking about it today. It's one of those things. It, it lives with you. It changes your life. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly timey-wimey stuff. Why do you think this is a show that could go for another 50 years? I mean, why is this a series? And I know you've been asked this before, but I'm really curious for your perspective. Yeah, I have been asked this before. I've never had a good answer. <laughs> now it might be the moment. <laughs> why, do we, why do we keep coming back? I don't know. I wish I knew. I mean, it, who knows? There's obviously something about it that's just perfect. It's just one of these perfect ideas, isn't it? It allows you in and it, it fires the imagination in a particular way. I often wonder if it's something to do with, with the, the fantastical and the futuristic meeting, the kind of the mundane and the sketchy. The TARDIS is the most extraordinary vehicle you could imagine and yet it's wrapped up in a scrappy wooden box. There's something about the juxtaposition of that, I think, mm -hmm. that, the, that the Doctor is uh, the cleverest, most extraordinary being and yet he's a bit scrappy and anarchic and I, I don't know. He's ancient and forever. He burns at the centre of time and he can see the turn of the universe. Stop it! I said stop it. And he's wonderful. I, I even try and figure out why it appealed to me so much as a child because it, it really captured my imagination in a way that nothing else really did and, and possibly it's to do with the fact that he's the geek hero rather than the, the jock hero. All those things and something about the range of storytelling possibilities. But I wish I knew exactly what it was. Because, uh, but of course, if anyone could bottle it, then, right. then every show would be running for 15 years <laughs> and it wouldn't be unique and we wouldn't be talking about it. So I, I guess we just have to accept that some things have, are sprinkled with fairy dust and we'll never quite understand why. We love the stamp that you put on it. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. <laughs>